Hello, Spark fans. Welcome back to Advancing Spark, brought to you by Advancing Analytics, your friendly neighborhood data and AI consultancy. I am going to have a bit of a nerdy day today looking at the new interactive Python debugger. Now, this is part of that big war going. Do you develop locally? Do you develop in browser? In browser? You type in browser. It's like using Notepad. Why would you do that? Yeah, it's been an interesting journey. I basically switched to just using browser development a couple of years ago because I'm always on the move, always on the road, and managing versions is, is slightly annoying. But also, lots of clients I work with don't necessarily have Python installations on their dev laptops. They should do. They should have permissions to do that, but they don't always do that. So essentially, I've had to work in the lowest grade way so that I can actually teach people, meet them where they're at, and then if they've got VS Code in locally, if they can do things locally, sure, we can go and build things in a proper professional dev environment. Note, proper professional dev environment. Kind of implying doing it in a browser isn't. And that's because it's been missing loads of those features, all those things that we love to do, like step through code. Hello, 10 years ago. I want to be able to actually write code like a profession. So the load of reasons why people actually want to again, use local uh, coding environments. It just makes sense. So the Python interactive debugger is this huge, huge change, mind the cat, saying that we're actually now going to do things in the browser properly. It's adding this element of professionalism to coding in the browser. Being able to step through code in the browser is this massive, massive thing, which actually should bring the two camps closer together. And certainly means for me, wherever I am, if someone asked me to fix a horrible bit of code, I can just hop on it using my phone, using someone else's laptop, using whatever I happen to find that can connect to the internet. And that, that gives a huge amount of flexibility and accessibility. So yeah, that is the plan for today. We're going to have a look at this thing, how it works, how you turn it on, and does it actually work? As always, if you are new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, let's go and have a bit of a look. So first and foremost, there's a load of docs around it. Uh, a couple of things. One, it is in public preview. It is not production grade yet. So give it give it a little pinch of salt when you're actually using it. Um, two, a cluster needs to be turned on to step through your code, and it needs to be 13.3 or higher. Um, and it doesn't work in the shared access mode if you've got a shared cluster for debugging. So spin up your own cluster when you're doing ground dev is kind of the message that they've been pushing out for a little while now. Um, you need to enable it. So you need to go into your developer settings and enable the Python debugger, otherwise you won't see it there. So we'll go and have a little bit of a look at that. And then we can actually use it. So there's a debug button, or we can uh, do Control Shift D. So you're used to running like Control and Shift to run a cell, oh, Control and Enter to uh, run a cell. Now Control Shift D starts the debugger, and then you can start stepping through. Annoyingly, there aren't shortcuts to step through things. So you can, there's some buttons say we'll run until you get to a breakpoint, step down to the next line, step into usual debugging code kind of stuff, uh, and then we can stop it. So yeah, bunch of things. Uh, it's Python only. You cannot use it with Scala and R. You cannot use it with SQL because SQL's not a, a language you tend to be able to step through. But uh, you could, but no, you just don't. <laughs> um, and yeah, you can't step into uh, external files or modules. So if you call the library and add a function, you can't step into that library like you would if you were doing things locally. So are some limitations, but not particularly crazy. So I've got a bit of code here. Someone has sent me a bit of code. Uh, no comments, obviously. And they've said something's wrong with it. I'm like, great. OK, yeah. cool. Well, we can try and figure things out. First and foremost, we need to turn it on. So we can go into view and you've got developer settings there. It'll give you a bit of a hint. If I try and run this and go, oh, deep Excel then if I've not got this turned on, it will tell me where I need to go to turn it on. It says go to developer settings and fix this thing. So if you're trying to do a debug and you can't see that button or it's grayed out, then you need to go to view, developer settings. And let's make this so you guys can actually see everything. Here we go. And then right down at the bottom, we've got uh, experimental features. So we go all the way down to the bottom. Experimental features, few different things in here, but you've got this Python notebook interactive debugger. Uh, and you can see I've just got that turned on, kind of. There you go, on. So it'll only work once that's turned on. As soon as it's turned on, it'll work. You don't need to quit out, refresh, restart your cluster or anything. I'll just start working. So cool, good. I have enabled my developer settings. I can actually go and do things, can I step back to my notebook. And then let's just run some things. 
So I can run that. That's fine. That seems to work. Uh, I can run that code. So I'm just making a quick data frame. Great. They've got a data frame. They shouldn't have a display if this is going to be production code, but it's fine. They're experimenting. It's okay. Uh, and they've got a load of a load of code in here. Well, a load of um, columns. Just some sample data. It looks like they're doing a quick toy thing. Okay. I'm assuming this is where I've got the error. It's already highlighted there's some errors in here, so we're using things that not defined DF yet. No, that's fine. They've leapt from uh, what's called market DF over. And that's where we get to trying to figure things out. What, what's going on here? So already the dev environment is better than it used to be. It's already highlighting the fact it doesn't know what EXPR, it doesn't know what DF is. It's got some issues with this. Um, but maybe there's more things wrong with it. So just looking at this code, so it's looking to say... Fine, it's looping through the schema. If the column name contains the name word time, it's going to convert it to a timestamp. So it's an automatic data typer shell for timestamp columns. So it's doing a few things. It's making uh, a column it's going to use. It's then applying that column into a data frame. It's doing that in a loop, and it'll only do it for time-based columns. I can see that by reading it, sure. I mean, some comments would be nice, a bit of markdown to explain what it's doing. But don't worry, it's fine. I can figure things out. Um, so we've got a few things that we can do in here. First and foremost, should be using the variable explorer. So when we've got these things defined, we can go and see what, what custom variables are currently in context. And you can see I've got market DF and sample file. So no wonder it doesn't know what DF is, because that's not a variable that's been defined yet. So we can, we can sort that in a second. But otherwise, we don't know what the problem is. We don't know what's going wrong. So we can put the breakpoints in now. So in my code, I can just highlight the side and go, actually, well, I don't want to see it for every column. Let's just see the first time it steps into um, a column. So the first time that is successful, the first column it finds that contains the word time, it's going to step into it. So now let's start my debug. Okay, so when the debugger started, automatically opens my variable explorer. You can see there's already something happening. So C is a new uh, variable that's defined by my for each loop. So it's gone through, it's gone, the one it's stopped on, so it's hit this condition. It's stepped into the subclause of the of the if statement, and I can see at this point C is seasoned one time. Cool, that works. So I know there's a load of other columns in here. So it got through all the column code. No, 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 no. It got down to season one time, and that's worked. So that part of it is working successfully. Great. I know that's working. Okay. So then, what is it trying to do next? Uh, I've got these different buttons. I can go to my next line. I can go to my step in. I can add another breakpoint and then just execute until it gets there using the um, continue execution. But I'm going to step down to the next line. So I can see at this point, convert SQL is two times time C name. Cool. Okay. So they've actually not dynamically done that. They've just hard coded the word C name. That doesn't make sense. But that actually should be an F string. So I can fix that bit of code. Cool. All right. At that point, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to restart the debug because it's not going to go and rerun bits of code if I've already stepped past it. So I've got back to the same point. I'm back to my season one time. I can still see the context from the last execution. Now be a little bit careful with this because Python, because Spark, it's not a clean execution each time I run it. It's rerunning this cell in the same session context I already had. So for this, com SQL has already been defined the bad way, but that's just because it's left over my variable explorer. I could have cleared all my state outputs in between rerunning this and rerun the original cells, but I just need to be cognizant of it when I'm running my code. Step to my next line. Going to recreate Conva SQL. And there we go. Now it's actually done it properly. It's, re it's written the SQL I'm trying to build. Two timestamp, season one time. It's actually properly generated that as a valid bit of Spark SQL. Uh, then got a little bit of debug, so it's just printing things out. Season one time contains time. Okay, so it's telling me what it's doing as I step through. And then it's trying to apply that into my data frame. And we know this is going to break because it's already got some squiggly red lines. But just to run, what's it going to go problem with? Well, it's probably going to be DFs not defined. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's stepped me out. I know that's no longer in there. So I can just do DF equals market DF. Now I could just change these ones to refer to market data frame. But because I want to divorce this from my original, just so it can run a few loops, I don't want to change market DF each time just in case it goes wrong. So new thing, I shouldn't call it DF because that's like calling a variable X or I. But still, even so, that should fix that part of the code. Um, EXPR still isn't defined. Uh, that's just because they're probably not imported PySpark SQL functions. No, 
Okay, so I can come up here. Be lazy from PySpark, Dice equal to functions. It'll be very good and do just EXPR. Okay, so that's now reported. That's now working. Should all be in there. So annoyingly, my um, breakpoint didn't actually move as I added more lines, but that's fine. Uh, so I'm just going to add that breakpoint back in where it was, debug my cell, run down to that point. Come on, continue. Okay, so I'm back at my season one point. I can go and have a dig into it. Now, I will say there's one or two things in here that I've caught trying to go through. Uh, I was having a look, so C.name. So C is my current, uh, the current focus of my iteration. So I'm currently on struct field. My schema, I've got struct type, which is the whole array. And then for C in that whole array, it's just each individual line of it. So it's a struct field. But that C dot name, I can't actually see in my variable explorer. And you've got this little inspect variable button, which kind of pokes you out and makes a new cell, basically just saying, tell me what this thing is. But that's blocked by the debug. You cannot run any of the cells in your notebook whilst you're debugging, and that includes the inspect variable. So weirdly, if I stop that, it's then going to run the other cell, and then it'll tell me, oh, that's a struct field with these properties. But I can't do it like I would in an IDE. I can't see that this struct field has a load of properties, name, metadata, nullable. I can't go and explore those child properties. So it's not as easy to debug some things as it would be in a local IDE, but it's a hell of a lot better than it would be if I was just doing it blind in a browser. So let's finish it off. Let's go and debug, get to the state I was in, continue, continue. So I can see the thing it's about to do. It's going to try and convert it. This time data frame exists. The expression function exists. Go to my next line and that seems happy. So actually I can take off my breakpoint and go, okay, well, keep going. So it's found a bunch of different columns that it wants to do. So it's got season one time, two, three, four time. It's got update time. It's tried to convert them all. And I've got my output data frame. And I can see, yeah, I've got some timestamps in there. That's all converted. And then right down at the bottom, I believe. Yeah, I've got my updated time right at the bottom. Cool. There we go. So that is debugging some Python. And it is debugging the higher level Python, right? Debugging the Python that's running inside your driver. It's not doing anything deep and low on the Spark code that's actually being passed down to the workers, but enables you to actually do any of the automation pieces that you're doing. Any of the go and get some metadata and run a loop. I'm trying to build a framework to automatically process a load of data using Spark. It's a debugging environment that you can use there. Loads and loads of really, really good stuff in there. So yeah, absolutely. If you're not already having a play with this, one, use the Variable Explorer. It's been in there for over a year now and is super, super, super useful. Two, use the new interactive Python debugger, because it's just like working through a local Python debugger. The only thing you can't do yet is use a keyboard shortcut to step through automatically and go next, 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 like we would if we're doing things locally. I'm hoping that's not too far off if they can figure out another keyboard shortcut. But yeah, really like a massive, massive improvement for how we're currently writing code, right? If you're writing most of your code in the browser and you've basically been in this world where it's essentially the same as writing it in Notepad with a few hints and underlines, this is just a massive leap forward to go, oh no, actually, it's like writing code anywhere else that actually is a place where you write code. Which is great. Cool. That is all I want to do today. A short, sharp little video just to say, go and use the Python Interactive Debugger. It's really, really good if you've got a load of messy code and if people give you garbage code, you can go and have a look at it. Now, don't forget, you also do have the Databricks Assistant. So if you have an error, you can just hit a button saying, well, go and diagnose that error. And it'll go off and use a large language model and come back saying, oh, it's probably that that's broken. But it doesn't always have the context, doesn't always know exactly what you're doing, and can occasionally hallucinate and come back with bad code. So use a mixture of those two, right? You're, you're a professional developer. Write your code properly. Use tools to an AI to accelerate your journey and make things faster then step through the code and with a debugger and actually make sure it's right. You can have the best of both worlds and become the most productive data engineer known to man. That's the plan. Cool. Well, that's me for today. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.